How is it going guys? Chris back here again with some more historic content. Today we're actually going to be going, uh, it's actually MTGA content, but we're also doing historic today. We're doing historic brawl, a format that has been a mainstay of the channel. And we're checking out one of the new competitive commanders that we kind of skipped over, and that is Mr. Oreo himself. It's not his real name, but every time I look at his name, Orfeo, all I see is Oreo. So I kept a slow hand. Uh, that may have been a mistake. But it's too late for that to bother us now. I'm gonna play Oreo on two. On four, Gargaros on five. Our opponent has played a boat. Uh, if I lose to the boat player, I will be sad. I will lose to the boat player if these go. Okay. There goes the boulder. So I can't play Gargaroth without another land. That's painful, mate. You shouldn't do that. Oh, we know to off the top is dirty, mate. It's real dirty. Do I just go Elena? I think Elena is the most sense because then we can haste something. So we can like, uh, next turn we can haste out ideally a three drop and then we can fling it afterwards. Come on, man. Be chill. Don't do this to me. Yeah. Well, we were very dead there anyways. I do have low mana cards in the deck. Like, it isn't a four drop deck. We aren't playing Karuga as our commander. We have things under three CMC. But, uh, we just gotta find them. Just gotta find them. Uh, we're gonna be doing a draft here in a couple of days. I don't know if it's gonna be tomorrow or the day after, but we will be doing a draft. Uh, I don't know what's quick drafting at that point. I can probably check at some point during the video, but... I got a free mulligan this. Three, four red sources. No green or black. That's bad. Keep, see, I told you. I told you I had... Uh, things below one C... Below three CMC. I have a champion of honor. And a Savala. That's so many things. And the Pelt Collector. We don't trust Pelty though. We also can't cast any of our three drops. Which is cool. We didn't need to anyways. This one one will get there. Eventually. God, I hope I go drug. Well, never mind. I was gonna say I hope I draw a green source, but Arena predicted my thoughts and thoroughly disappointed me as a result. Wondering archaic. My one drop. K 
can beat a four drop. It can. Because it's a four two. Thanks to the boulder. I could haste this in, uh, or I could make it a 3-3, and then when it attacks, it'll pump another creature to be a 3-3, and then Boulder can double that plus 3, meaning we have so much power. Hey, double green, ain't that cool? Hey, Savala's cool. Don't, don't, don't have my Savala. Uh, go, go, boys. Healthy will become a 4 2. Yeah, I want Platinum are super dead. Should have played Champion of Lantern Hold. Um, but I was thinking I could get like a lot of mana off of um off of Savala, which maybe. Rude. Don't you see? You have already lost. So Savala is a cool option. Go Inferno. Take action. Play land. Swing at you. Double your power. Go, go, Boulder. It's been a while since I've watched Power Rangers, but I did watch Power Rangers as a kid. And Go Go Rangers was the one phrase from the show that I remember. We are eight minutes in, two games in, one loss, one victory. That's pretty good. Quick, efficient games. Um, yeah, the loss wasn't that exciting because we kind of kept a bad hand and died before we really did anything, but... Second game, second game we did things. We had fun. Maybe. Just in the mic a little bit, because we seem to be topping out. Yeah, I'll keep this. A bow dark and drag nope, can't cast my bow dark and dragon heart. That's a fun name. Bow dark and the Garden Dragonheart. So we'll keep it up to cycle. We have a no need for cycle, but we could cycle if the need arises. Play our Dragonheart next turn into our boulder. Hamlet back Goliath is a card that's just awful, but it seems so fun with Mr. Oreo. Go go boulder. You're a four four now, Bogarden. Bogarden. Okay, maybe it's not a fun word, maybe it's just a word I can't pronounce. Bow Garden, Dragonheart. Uh, 
Uh, sorry, Mr. Boulder. I will not see you become a hostage. Initial, you are my blades will always strike true. Well said, Samet. Well said. Search a library for up to two creature and or planeswalker guards and put them onto the battlefield. It's not far off. Of course they could bugbear us, but I guess Gearhawk works too. Decline. Oh, well, that's a bit of damage, ain't it? Um, well. Hmm. Boulder. Surrender now and I'll spare you. Unfortunately, Bodog and Dragonheart does die. Well, he should have died. They should have blocked his gear heart and killed him. So we could have done a trick there where in response to Oreo's trigger, we sacrifice Oreo and then it becomes a 4-4 four -four doubled up to 8-8 eight -eight and it has double strike. So we would have done like 18 damage instead of 14. Hey, come on. Hazard, forgive me. Rude. Rude. Oreo, do your job. Did we miss a land drop? I felt like I might have. I was kind of, I kind of liked Jaxus in Brawl because she's kind of like a Kiki Jiki effect. But then, like playing with Fable the Mirror Breaker in uh, Explorer, she's not as exciting as I thought she could be. You know, resolve. Uh, yeah, draw your cards, man. Draw. Them. Rude. We're dead. Cycle of raking claws. The boulder did not save the day. That's disappointing. It was a shorter video, but we saw a boulder do his thing. And that's what boulder is about, you know? We can check out the deck list because I think boulder has a couple of interesting things in it that you just don't see in other decks. Mainly because they're related to what he does, but yeah. Where is the button for this? There it is. I knew there was one. So we uh, bring our deck up. So Nested Shambler was a card I wanted to play. Because if you double his power enough, you can sacrifice him and make a bunch of squirrels. And you don't even really need to sacrifice him. Like, if you double it enough, they're forced to block and you make 10 squirrels, and it's really cool. Minion of Might, same thing. And, uh... Just... Never mind, that was a bad decision. Uh, Necrosynthesis, that's a cool card that triggers off, that procs off power. So you can look at the X top cards of your library with X's power, put one of those cards in your hand and the rest in the bottom in random order. It could be a pretty good tutor in the right situation. Uh, Buccaneer's Bravado, double strike. Fling is fling, you know fling, double strike, double strike. 
double the power. Uh, that's just removal. Guy's blessing. A little bit of card draw, a little bit of recursion. Not good recursion, but we have regrowth for our other recursion. Card draw and a power base trigger. Uh, haste. And it deals damage when it dies equal to its power, which is important. Tin the Pest, another way to get the effect of Nestling Shambler. Uh, Neltar, he can double his own power, and he has a power base trigger. Really fun. Exponential Growth is really good. Mask of Grizzlebrand, I didn't know about. I really wanted to try it because if you equipped it to someone and you swing in and they have to block it, you can draw and gain a you can draw and pay a lot of life. And having a lot of cards in hand in a Jun deck seems really good. Arnie, he's just a way to benefit off of Oreo without having to target him with Oreo. So you may change his power to one plus the greatest power among other creatures you control. So if you double up like a Gnarl thing two times, so you double them up to a four and then you double them up to an eight, you can make Arnie a nine with one mana, and that's really efficient power increase. Uh, but Dragon, but Garden Dragonheart is a sacrifice outlet for some of these things that need to die, and uh, he's free. Plus, he has a power base ability. Having a 4 4 could be relevant in certain situations. Devilish Valet, you've seen him in standard. He does cool things. We always like it a good Devilish Valet. Uh, Kazal Fury, another fling. Krinko. Krinko could have been a fun token maker. Double his power a couple of times after he gets a counter. Make a bunch of tokens. Another double go. Double do another double strike. Battle to that recovery. Another regrowth. Fight rigging. Way to get counters on things. Helps with our doubling. Plus we might actually be able to cast something off of the hideaway. Hunter's Insight is one of those cards I've seen in Commander and I didn't know it was in Historic Brawl but it feels like it could be really good to hit somebody for 12 with Trample and draw 12 cards. Like that seems really fun. Hydra's Growth, another double effect, a little more expensive and reliant on counters, but still could be good. Champion of Landhold, uh, we make its power big and then our stuff can't be blocked. That's the plan with it. Savala, Ramp, Card Draw. Body Launderer, uh, way to draw cards mainly, but it could also return a creature because our creatures tend to be quite low power and then they get big as opposed to our creature being big and then they get uh, moved around. Uh, gravitational Punch is it's a fling where you don't have to sacrifice a creature and because of Jumpstart you can cast it twice which is why it's in the deck. It's like Copies three and four of Fling. Because it can't, it's, it hits a player. It doesn't hit creatures, which is why it's, it's not really a good card, but we could kill somebody with this with Oreo pretty easily. Uh, Gruel Beast Master, we saw that one in the, in the game. We didn't get to cast it, but it's really good. Uh, card draw. If you're playing a green deck in Historic Brawl, Guardian Project is pretty much a must include. It's just really good. Toski, another good card draw option. Beast Whisper, another good card draw. Card draw. Momentous Fall is card draw specific to the deck because it draws card equal to the power of the creature you sacrificed. So the plan is to double something's power a bunch of times, attack with it. If it gets chumped, we sacrifice it to Momentous Fall and hopefully find a way to end the game over the next few turns, or just bury them in card draw. Brass Knuckles, having two double strike equipment seems valuable in the deck. You saw we have Ember Cleave and Lizard Blades in the deck anyway, so it's not as though we don't have those, it's just two for one seems like a better deal some of the times. Just uh, another way to turn big powered creatures into a bunch of tokens. Uh, Freelance Muscle. Whenever it attacks, it blocks, gets plus one, plus one, into, plus X, plus X until the end of the turn, where plus X is the greatest power among creatures, power or toughness among creatures you control. 
another way to uh, benefit off of Oreo doubling something's power and not have to actually target the freelance muscle. So we target something else and then it gets power equal to the target because of its own ability. And Gargaras just a really solid late game threat that has trample. Uh, Glory Sunrise Ramp can provide our team with trample. Card draw. Decent all around. Not the strongest card, but yeah, it's worth it. Con Eternal Ronus, who you've seen this card in Historic. Um, it comes down, it doubles the power of the creatures on the board. Before Crater Hope within Historic, Gone Eternal Ronus was the de facto finisher for a lot of decks because it did something similar. It didn't give Trample, which was a problem, but we're here for power doubling, which Ronus does. Uh, where was I? Ronus, Unnatural Growth, power doubling, and toughness doubling each combat for free. Can't argue with that. Lord of Extinction. Um... I just kind of want to see a 36-36 be doubled into a 72-72 and then hit somebody. Corvold, really strong creature. Grows really big. Power can be doubled. We're going to sacrifice things. We need sack outlets, so he serves that purpose. And uh, he draws cards. Really no reason not to play him most of the time. Um... Marionette Master is a bit of an odd choice, I guess. Because we really only get the artifacts from its Fabricate, but if we double its power and we have something like um, our... Where did our dragon go? There he, uh, there he is, Dragonheart, on the battlefield. We can just sack the creatures after attacking with Marionette and then deal three times its power worth of damage. Um... Embercleave, another double strike artifact. Inferno of the Star Mounts. Now this one's a weird one because you might think it wouldn't work, which it it doesn't by itself. You still have to use its ability to achieve its effect. So when Inferno of the Mountain Star gets plus one, plus zero, until the end of the turn, you pay one. When its power becomes twenty this way, it deals twenty damage to any target. That ability, uh you can achieve that ability by doubling its power to a high number like like 18 or 16 and then paying two or three two or four red mana to get it all the way up to 20 and when that happens it will still deal the 20 damage to any target so it's a good way to uh to proc that ability even though when you proc that ability you're probably winning anyway, but you never know. Uh, Grund. Whenever Grund attacks alone, double its power. You can kick it and put 5-1-1 on the counters on it, so you can attack alone with him, and he'll be a 10-10 if you kicked him. So he'll double his power uh, to 20, and then Oreo will double his power to 40, which is really good. And if you somehow don't win with attacking with your 40-40 because he doesn't have trample by himself. You need one of the other cards to give him trample. You can do things like Rish Card's Expertise or um, Momentous Fall where you just draw cards equal to his power. Drawing 40 cards should net you a game win at some point, hopefully. Uvenal Haldra, Hydra, Ramp, uh, Reach, and it just gets big. Doubling its power might mean it has to be blocked and even though it doesn't have trample, that's it's really good. The tour of the incinerator, uh, it's basically a fling. Uh, yeah, it's a resistance fling, and it ramps us a bit, but that's not relevant. As I said, this is kind of a meme card I put in there. Hamlet Goliath. Um, I just want to get it big and attack with it. Terror of Mount Velis, team double strike, really good. And then our final like card card is. Great Hinge. Great Hinge. Ramp and some of the best card draw on the format. Plus, with Oreo's ability, 
we can play it super, super early. So, that's kind of the deck. I went through every card in it. Um, actually, I might have been talking about the deck for longer than I played the deck, but... Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, remember to leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, we'll definitely see Mr. Oreo again. Orfeo? I think his name is Orfeo, but he's Oreo. We all know it. So, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.